Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Insider's View with Melinda Doolittle. They'd like to be back on Idol, I guess, huh? <laughs> Melinda became obviously a household uh, name across America when she appeared in the sixth season of American Idol. Placed third, everybody thought she should have won. I still think she was cheated. Um, <laughs> But, uh, but we were awfully proud of you on American Idol. Before Idol, Belmont. That's where Melinda Doolittle was, as Bruiser. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was the mascot. You said you took a d deep breath when you said that. I did. It was hot in there. <laughs> I, I mean, I loved it. I loved every second of it. I'm a sports fanatic. Um, I still believe that Belmont needs a football team, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> um, but I, I love sports, so it was just exciting. But what I didn't realize is that when I was bruiser, there, the, the Bruin looked mean. And so I would walk up to cute little children and bend down and I'd be smiling on the inside. And they're like, ah! I scared <laughs> so many kids. But I loved every second of it. What was your favorite moment? I've heard you talk about it. <laughs> Sorry, it sounded awful. <laughs> you tell me to be honest. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. That's cool. what we want. Uh, I've heard you talk about going up to Penskill and other people like that. What was the biggest? What was your most memorable moment as Bruiser? <laughs> um, <clears throat> Vince Gill is not watching this, right? No. Okay. So, um, I guess. Vince had a, just kind of a tradition, I don't know, where he would hit the Bruin in the chest before the game. <laughs> and um, I don't, <laughs> he didn't know that I was the Bruin, I guess. I, yeah. thought, I guess he just assumed there was, you know, a guy in there. A guy in there. So he'd yeah. be like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> every time. Uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, I think one day I might have punched him back just a little harder than he <laughs> planned on, but that was probably my most memorable moment. Uh, well, no, you had a lot of great times uh, okay. when you were on campus at Belmont, and afterwards you sang back up for people like Michael McDonald, Aretha Franklin, and, and folks like that. And then, then all of a sudden there was this great thing that Idol happened. But the funny thing about Idol, and you may know this story, you may not, you did not plan on auditioning. I mean, that was not your game plan, was it? Not at all. Um, I loved singing background. I loved being on the road. I loved being in the studio. Just kind of, you know, being the support system for a lot of different artists. And I got to work for so many different types of artists that it just stretched me in different directions. So I loved that. But I had a friend that was auditioning for American Idol and he asked me would I go with him and my first answer was absolutely not I am not going through all of that and he told me this interview is going to make me sound like I'm the worst person in the world um he told me that if I went with him I could see all the funny auditioners in person <laughs> and um so I signed up <laughs> I'm in. I want to see what really You want to happened. see the show, right? I did. I wanted to see what happened. And, and so I got another couple of friends together. So the four of us decided that we were going to go and we were going to audition. And I, I have no idea how I made it through. Absolutely no idea. None of my other friends made it through. And they are phenomenal, phenomenal singers. So if, if any of you all have auditioned or are going to audition, just know that there are phenomenal singers that don't make it through sometimes and and it's part of television you know they're casting a show and all of that so keep going after what's in your heart even even if somebody tells you no what do you think made you stand out as opposed to the other people <laughs> i have no idea i um maybe because i was a little nervous i was kind of scared but once i start singing like once once the song starts for me everything just goes away you know even the nerves all of that i just kind of i give you all i've got and then when it's over i'm scared again because <laughs> then you're going to tell me what you think but um i during the song i i can't help but express myself and i i think maybe that was part of it i i love to look people in the eye when i'm singing mm -hmm. and so i mean i was 
looking at the judges. You know, I, I wanted them to, to feel the same thing I felt Connect. when I yeah. sang the song. Yeah. So I, maybe that was it. So that explains that shy look and <laughs> that deer in the headlights look <laughs> after you performed every time. I was petrified. I mean, I people made fun of me for looking so scared when I was done singing, but. I dare anyone to look Simon in the face when they're done singing like, I, and not look scared. I mean, I was, I really was petrified about what they would think and because I had been singing background for so long and, mm -hmm. you know, you learn to blend in, you learn to just do what producers want as opposed to using your own voice, you know, they'll, they'll be like, I want you to sound like, you know, Mariah Carey right. today. Right. And so I was finding my own voice on stage every single week and so I would give them what was me, and then be like, did you like it? You know, I mean, it was, it was right. a little scary for me. But there was a course you took here at Belmont, you said, that really helped prepare you yes. for that idol experience. Talk uh, about that. Pop rock styles. Um, uh, the professor doesn't teach here anymore, but she's actually here right now. She is one of my best friends in the entire world now. Janet Kenyon was um, teaching the class, and that that class, she just went through all different styles, and I didn't understand the importance of that. I didn't understand why I would need to know how to sing a Sheryl Crow song or anything like that, but it has been the most helpful thing, even, even for singing background. She really prepared me. That class prepared me to go in and listen to a producer say, I need you to sound like this, and I was able to know what that style was. I had studied that style, and I could deliver it yeah. on the spot. And that's, that's what happened on American Idol. You know, all of a sudden, it's Bon Jovi week. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, great. <laughs> so, I mean, you just, I really, I really feel like I was definitely prepared yeah. because of that class. You know, uh, this, uh, it's widely known, but, but your voice was, I mean, almost never found, really, when you were a kid. I mean, they told you just to move your lips and not sing, right? I, I grew up tone deaf until the seventh grade. Um, people would hit a note on a piano and be like, sing it. And I'm like, I am singing it. They're like, no, <laughs> you're nowhere close. And I would audition for choirs, and they told me I had all the charisma in the world. So they'd be like, we're gonna put you in the choir. We're sitting right in the middle. We want you to smile really big and move your mouth, but please don't let any sound come out. <laughs> and I, so I, I mean, I was awful, and I, but I loved music so much. And I remember going to my mom and saying, mom, I wanna sing because I love it. I love that music tells a story. And her exact words to me were, baby, you gonna have to pray hard. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> that's another thing. Make sure you have honest people around you at all times. <laughs> Very helpful. But um, I really, like, I, I wanted it badly enough that for a month I pretty much locked myself in my room and I practiced and I prayed. Those were the only two things I knew to do. Yeah. And I, I mean, I gave it all that I had. And my youth group was having a talent show at the end of that month. And I was like, God, I want to sing at that talent show. And I got up on that stage and a different voice came out of me that has ever come out of me. And I was, I, I was able to sing harmonies at that moment. So I, I, I know that practice was a part of it, but I believe prayer was definitely, <laughs> definitely what helped me yeah. through that. And, and so at this point, any time I step on a stage, I consider it a blessing because I know that it, it, it's not really me, you know? It, it's God answering the dream of a little seventh grader that really, really wanted to sing. And led the New York Times to say about you, one of the most phenomenally gifted singers of our times and years. That's, I mean, that's high praise. <laughs> I, I, I love that they said that, and I love that they, they named it a gift because I really believe that it it's a gift yeah. to me, and I, I don't take that lightly at all. So, so you gave up your dreams, you may not know this, about being a gymnast to become a singer. <laughs> or go to Tulsa. Huh? I know, it sounds like I really gave up something really, really important to me. I, I was a bad gymnast. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I think my highest score was a 6.7 out of 10. So, um, 
I, so yes, I gave that up. <laughs> I, I tried, my mother let me try everything, you know? I tried ice skating, figured out really quickly I hated the cold. I, I tried dancing, figured out that I was very clumsy. You know, I tried everything and there was, there was nothing that just, that I could grasp onto at, except for singing. That's amazing. It went to Tulsa? Started at Tulsa? I started um, college at the University of Tulsa. Uh -huh. I went my first two years there. And um, then I transferred to Belmont because of the commercial music program and the music business program. Uh -huh. I wanted to know um, both sides. Like, I wanted to know about singing something other than classical music. And a lot of colleges don't offer that. Mm -hmm. And I also wanted to understand the business of it. And I use those business classes every day, too. I mean, learning how to read a contract and understanding publishing and um, that wasn't my favorite class but um, <laughs> but because of it I I use it all the time and I understand what's going on and I'm able to say you know I don't I don't like that in the contract or actually normally in publishing this is what happens you know yeah. because I, I know what happens yeah and it's good that you know that now it, it's great Let's, let's take it, and, and our students have been tweeting questions, so let's, oh, yeah. I want to give them, you know, they don't they need to hear from me all the time. So, be nice. Um, we'll start out. What, what, this is, what advice would you give to a college-age musician at Belmont? Advice. Um, my first piece of advice would be to know this business. Um, just like I was just sharing about the music business courses, know, know about contracts, know about publishing, all of that. But if you are just here loving what you do, just loving playing, loving singing, get all the experience you can. Get all of it that you can. If somebody's asking you to play or sing on their demo, they're not paying anything, chalk it up to experience. Get every bit of experience that you can. And be kind to the people around you here at Belmont because those are the people that you'll probably be working with in the future. Mm -hmm. um, I, I work with so many so many graduates of Belmont. Um, my band is made up of Belmont grads. My, I mean, we all work together. The work that I got after college was mainly through my Belmont connections. So make sure that not only are you trying every style, perfecting every style, but be kind to those around you. Very, very kind. I want to preface this next question because you've performed all around the world. Uh, at the White House, at the Kennedy Center, at Carnegie Hall, and we've talked about some of the people you've performed with before, but Peter Cetera, Cindy Lauper, and the renowned Boston Pops Orchestra. And that was post-American Idol. What did American Idol teach you about the music business? <laughs> um, gosh, American Idol, for me, it was, it's, it's kind of like boot camp for singers, you know? It's, it's about getting tough skin, mm -hmm and um, learning how to deal with criticism, learning how to accept judgment, learning that this business is a judgmental business and a critical business. And you, you have to get tough skin to work in this business. It's okay to hear no, because at this point it drives me even more. I'm like, okay, you tell me no, then I'm gonna show you that I actually can do it, I'll just find another way. And I think that American Idol kinda just put that fire in me. And it's a fire that I didn't know that I had, mainly because I, I had been singing background for so long that I didn't know that I had the fire to be an artist and the drive to be the front person. And American Idol showed me that that was in me and that I, I just had to push through the criticism to get to where I wanted to go. Your mama gave you some advice <laughs> about dealing with criticism. You, you, you can, Mama and Jesus are the two people Mama you, put, and Jesus. you put together, right? They are my favorites. That, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you want to put them up there, but anyway, they're both up there, right? Jesus and Mama. But your mama had advice. <laughs> what was her advice to you? My mom um, had so much great advice, but the criticism advice that she gave me, and I don't, I don't know if you guys know, I've, I've written a book and it's called Beyond Me, and um, it's my, I, I just have mommy-isms in there, different things that she told me. And um, one of the chapters is entitled, Chew the Hay and Spit Out the Sticks. And that was how she taught me how to deal with criticism. And um, 
She was like, when you chew the hay, you're listening to what someone has said to you or about you, and you're being honest with yourself. You're saying, is there something in this that is true? Is there something that I can work on? Is there something that I can actually improve upon? I will chew that up and I will use it. And the stuff that's meant to hurt you and knock you down, that stuff, I learned to spit out. Yeah. And it uh, has really been one of the most valuable lessons for me to learn. Because, you know, people, people say a lot about you, you know, whether it's online or, or anywhere. You, you see a lot of things about yourself. And I love that she told me to be honest with myself and see if there is a way that I can improve upon something. Mm -hmm. Look at that first and then the rest of it spit it out. How difficult was it for you to step from being the background singer to being out front? <laughs> it was one of the hardest transitions I think I've ever made just because you think maybe it's, you know, it's a difference of maybe 20 feet on a stage, but there's, there's a difference of pressure, there's a difference of responsibility. Um, all of a sudden, you know, I had background singers and they had to be paid. And <laughs> I never thought about that. Being the background singer, you know, if there was, was there pressure on the artist to, to take care of the people in their camp? I, I, didn't, I didn't appreciate that as much as I think I should have. But on this side of things, um, I love the fact that even though I have a band and everything that I feel responsible for, I get to tell my story on stage every night. You know, I get to share with that audience and get to give them a piece of me every single night, and uh, it, it's a huge blessing. You wrote a book about your life where you, where you expressed a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. Why did you want to write Beyond... Um, beyond Me. Beyond Me. Why did you want to write that? Well, um, when the, you know what, when they first asked me, when the publishing company came to me and said, would you write a book? I thought, I don't know that I have anything to say to people. <laughs> um, but they were like, well, just, you know, just think about it. Start thinking about why you are the person that you are and how you became the woman that you are. And I started just thinking about um, the things that my mom taught me and the things that caused me to just grow into who I am and, and how I approach situations, how I, how I look on the brighter side of things and all of yeah. that. And people, people ask me all the time, you know, why, why are you like that? You know, why do you smile in the midst of craziness? Like, why do you have joy right now? Why, you know, why um, can you accept criticism? Why, why are you that person? What made you afraid and all of that? And how did you deal with that fear? And I realized I do have a story to tell. I can, I can tell people how I've come up to all of those situations and gotten through them. And hopefully it's something practical enough for them to do also. Yeah. Question here, what was your most starstruck moment? Oh, I have a lot of them. Um, I think, I will have to say right now, um, last October, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame did a tribute to Aretha Franklin and asked me to sing on the tribute and to sing two of her songs. And I was on the bill with Sissy Houston, Lauryn Hill, Shaka Khan, and then me. Like, I, I, I didn't understand how I even got on that bill, but after singing her two songs, she came backstage and I got a chance to meet Miss Aretha Franklin. And it was one of the most amazing times because I had sung background on a record of hers. Right. And, you know, right. I, I, but you don't get to meet the artist when you're singing on their record. Did it surprise you that she knew who you were? It completely shocked me that she knew who I was. It continues to shock me on a daily basis when people that I've looked up to walk up to me and say, Melinda, it's so great to meet you. And I'm like, really? So, I, <laughs> uh, so um, Aretha Franklin was that for me, uh, Gladys Knight. These are all, you know, just legends yep. that I've had the honor of not just meeting, but singing in front of and, and standing side by side with. And it's, it's just huge for me. Well, one of those moments had to come at the White House because you and Laura Bush, <laughs> you were very involved in malaria no more in Africa and buying nets for kids there. And, and you 
had dinner and sang at the White House. I Share did. that story. Um, I had traveled to Africa on behalf of Malaria No More with Mrs. Bush. And um, I got to sing with an African children's choir while we were there. And they had learned the words to Amazing Grace just to sing with me. And um, she was, Mrs. Bush was being honored at the White House a few months later and asked would I come and sing with the World Children's Choir and sing Amazing Grace uh -huh. like I had done in Africa. And I, um, first of all, was like, of course I'm going to the White House. Why would I ever say no to that? Uh -huh. And can I bring my mommy? Like, those are my two things. <laughs> and um, so my mommy and I went to the White House, um, met President Bush, and before, before the actual concert, um, we had dinner in the state dining room and President Bush had come up with a seating chart and sat me right next to him. So I was um, trying not to spill my soup and <laughs> shake and, <laughs> and, and all he wanted to know was what is Simon really like, you know, like, <laughs> so <laughs> totally made me comfortable after that, but um, just, just an amazing, amazing experience to be able to be at the White House and to start singing and look out and see, you know, the President of the United States sitting right in front of you and mouthing the words to Amazing Grace. You know, I mean, that was huge for me. Yeah. Question here, what was the main thing that you held on to during the American Idol process to keep your faith firm in such a stressful situation? Oh, I, first of all, I don't know how people do it without God. I have no idea because that was, that was the one constant that I had on uh, being on the show. I think the thing that helped me keep it strong was that there were a lot of contestants on the show that were the, in the same boat as I was. They, they loved the Lord. They were here just in a petrifying situation, but ready to give it their all, you know? So we would get together, we would pray before we went on stage. We, um, Phil Stacy was on my season and he was a worship leader at his church. So he would get on the piano, we would sing Fred Hammond songs, we would do whatever we could to kind of calm ourselves down yeah. and to just hold on to the fact that we knew we were there for a reason. And you knew and Jordan were. Jordan, that's my girl, that's my baby girl. And Sadly enough, I was the oldest on the show. She was the youngest, but she was the one calming me down half the time. Uh, <laughs> just because she just was like, this is where we're supposed to be. So we'll pray beforehand. So we used to hold hands before the show and just say a prayer just so we knew why we were there, what we were doing, and just get out there and give it our all. You've called yourself an idol addict. <laughs> I Are you? love idol. You, you know? Well, I mean... <laughs> You know, it's not NCIS, but... Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> or Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> oh, I do. Okay. Uh, I, I absolutely love American Idol. Um, yeah. And I, um, right now I do a web show called Idology Every uh -huh. Week. And it kind of feeds my idol addiction because now I have to watch every week. Even though I, I would because I, I love seeing people get on that stage and their dreams just come true before their eyes, you know? And I love seeing great, great contestants. And this season is my favorite season by far. I mean, they can sing. I love it. Sorry, it comes on tonight. I'm really excited. I'm really excited. Well, Go Joshua. Go that who Colton. You, that's good. You're pulling, who, who do you like? I like Joshua Ledette. Ooh. I like, <laughs> I like Colton Dixon. I like, um, <laughs> Jessica Sanchez. What's his voice? What's this other voice that's coming out? I like it. I know. They bring, out, they bring out the kid in me. I'm so excited. Oh, I like... Um, Easy. Okay, sorry. Uh, I have to remind myself that they are so young. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> they did... Is it warm in here? I know. <laughs> They did their um, songs from their birth year uh -huh. a couple weeks ago, and they were like, in 1995, I'm like, what? I graduated from high school. No, I didn't. I, gra I graduated. Maybe anyway. that's why I don't like it. Right. <laughs> I love the show. I'll just leave yeah. it at that. <laughs> I love the show so much. That's a great experience. So to, to, to know that you still 
have that feeling for the show and, the, and, and mm -hmm. watching the performers go through that experience. I mean, I, I think I have a different, a different point of view on the show right now just because I've been through it and I know how stressful it is. So sometimes, um, a lot of times, I will like live tweet the show, you know, um, and I will watch people come up and say, "Man, they they lost their pitch when they walked to the front of the stage, and that, you know, that wasn't good." And I'm like, "Well, you have to understand that the monitors at the front of the stage are actually awful. They're underneath the stage; they can't hear right there, but they're standing there because the cameraman told them to go there, you know. So just different things. That I, I just have a different point of view on the show, so I am. I am into it and I'm rooting for all well, of this. Well, so that's some good behind the scenes stuff we don't know. Right. It's, it's, it's hard to know they, you know, it's, it's television, so they want aesthetics, you know? They want it to look great, but that doesn't always mean it sounds great. So yeah. it is, it's a rough job to sing on that stage. What do you think about the judges now? The new judges? Ah, you know. Mm. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> Let me say this first. Um, I'm a huge fan of the Simon, Paula, Randy days because- That's your era. That's, that's my crew. Um, so Randy's my boy. Um, Jennifer Lopez was my favorite mentor during my season mm -hmm. because she does care about the contestants. And I am a huge Aerosmith fan. So Steven Tyler, I mean, you just don't get better than that. However, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, 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 and I've seen them judge more this season than, than ever. They're, they're starting to, you know, kind of give some constructive criticism and give some things that would be helpful for the contestants. Uh -huh. But I feel like sometimes because they are still very much in this business and still trying to sell albums and do that kind of thing, that they're, they're really careful about what they're saying because they're like, I still want people to buy my record, yeah. you know? Right. And I have a single out next week, you know? So I, I just feel like maybe they're a little more, a little more careful than I would, I would like for them to be in that position. Do you, you keep up with uh, Simon? Do you have contact with Simon at all now? I don't have a lot of contact with Simon. Um, the last time I saw him, he, he told me that he still loved me. And he winked at me, which is my favorite thing ever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I, I love Simon, um, but I, I haven't had a lot of contact with him recently. Do you have, you've, we were talking earlier, you've got such a busy schedule coming up in the next few weeks. Uh, yeah, you're getting ready to do Cinderella at the Skirmore. Have you ever done this before? I have never done it, <laughs> thanks. I am, um, I'm doing, Cinderella with the Show Hope Foundation, which is uh, Stephen Curtis Chapman's foundation, right. and um, I am playing an evil stepsister. <laughs> so I am working on finding my evil side. It's going to be hard for you, right? I can, I can do it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's some times where it's a little bit hard, but I, I have something to draw from. Uh, so I, I'm very, very excited about that, and we really, I mean, we're doing this on like a week of rehearsals and just getting out there and giving it all we've got. So um, I'm very, very excited from, for that. Theater is in your background though. You did a lot of, a lot of theater and, and one of your retreat areas when you were out and you would, when you would come back to decompress was the Boiler Room Theater down in Franklin, right? Yes, I love the Boiler Room Theater. Love, love Franklin and the factory there and that theater for me, they gave me my first musical job you know they didn't know if i knew how to act they knew nothing they were just like we need you for this role but this was before I idol. this is before idol yeah they were like someone recommended you we want to give you a chance yeah and my first show with them was 1940s radio hour and then i did um big river with them uh -huh. and how to succeed in business without really trying and nonsense which is my favorite even though people call me whoopi goldberg all the time after that um <laughs> i did nonsense and i did nun crackers with them actually after uh -huh. american idol i came back and i was like can we can the nuns get back together and just yeah. do one more <laughs> show and we did a christmas show and i got to do about seven of those shows but i I just love the theater and what they've offered to me and how they kind of taught me how to emote a song and really tell a story with every song I sing. Mm -hmm. And I think that theater background is what helps me on stage, you know, to, to deliver a song and 
to really make sure that the audience is getting every single line and every single word. One of our questions uh, deals with the music industry itself and how do you keep yourself in focus? How do you keep yourself calm? Because it can be a crazy business out there. And how do you kind of keep moving forward and not get distracted or pulled apart? I, th I think the most important thing is to to know who you are, know, know your goals. I, I think um, it's okay if I quote the Bible in here, right? It's good for y'all, okay. So there's a, there's a uh, preach. Um, there's, there's a scripture that says write the vision and make it plain. And I think that that is probably one of the most important things is to know your vision, to write it down and to stay focused, to know exactly, exactly what your goal is and not to let all the rest of the things that are going on around you, there are, there are so many options out there in this business to stray away from what you know you're supposed to be doing. So if you have your vision, if you've written it down, if you know where you're headed, then that should be your focus. And I, I think um, that's been the biggest thing, that and my mama being like, stay focused, young lady, you know? Uh -huh. She keeps on me and makes sure that, that I, am, I am keeping my focus in the right place. And, um, that I, one of the, one of my favorite things that my mom has said to me recently is, you know, you, you have to be the opposite of the things that you don't like in this business. Like one of the things I don't like in the business is that people will say a lot of things to you, but there's no follow through a lot of times, you know, they promise a lot, but they don't have the follow through. So she's like, so when you give someone your word, you have to have that follow through, you know? make sure that you are being the opposite of what you're not liking about this business so that you can arrive to your goal with your character intact and uh, knowing that you, you did it the right way. She even told you that about Idol. She because did. you you said when, when they offered you, you said you're not gonna do it, right? Or you, when, they, when, when American Idol called you back and you told your mama and you said, I don't know if I wanna do this. Oh. <laughs> Right? Do when, yeah, cool. On my first audition, when I made it through, I called my mom, and this was the day where, you know, 16,000 people had auditioned. It was a long day. I waited for 12 hours, and then I made it through, but my other friends didn't. And I called her, and I was like, Mom, I made it through the first round, um, but I don't think I'm going back. It was a little scary. It was a long day. It's not really my thing. And she was like, well, um, did, you, did you sign anything that said you know, the date of the next audition process or anything. And I was like, well, I mean, I signed that I could be on television and it had a date on there, but they expect some of us not to show up. And she was like, well, I raised you to be a woman of your word, so I guess you're going back. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, little did I know she had been praying for five years for me to audition for American Idol. <laughs> and so she had a little ulterior motive, but that's okay. <laughs> but I, I love that. And because of that, you know, every week she would just remind me, women of your word, keep going. So, so you, you, that's always there, huh? That's always there. Somebody wanted to know, do you ever miss your life before Idol? <laughs> Yes. Um, sometimes I, I, I miss certain aspects of it, um, like going to the grocery store in my sweats and stuff. Like I went to the grocery store one time and I was in sweats and a hat, didn't really have on much makeup, just, you know, it's the grocery store. I wanted grapes. That's it. <laughs> and um, the next week I went back and one of the ladies that worked there said, are you feeling better? And I was like, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I guess so. And she's like, oh, well, you were in here last week. And one of my coworkers asked, was that you? Because he, he wasn't sure. And I told him, yeah, that's her, but she looks a hot mess. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and she's like, but that's okay. I'm glad you're feeling better. And I was like, oh. So now, like, I second guess my grocery store outfits. You know, like, just little things like that. You know, occasionally I miss every once in a while. But I, it's so, it's so worth it when I step on that stage and get to just, sing my heart out and when I get to to sing in front of Aretha Franklin or go to the White House or I mean it's worth it when I get to go to Africa and look in these little kids faces and say you know we're helping you live your life you know because of this platform that I have I can reach 
so many people that are that are helping you be able to live your life to the fullest. And um, I, after going on American Idol, there was um, a group that kind of got behind me. I, they're called a fan club, but. They're my supporters. My mom and I prayed that we wouldn't, I wouldn't just have fans, because fans can be fickle, but we wanted supporters, people that would you know, yeah. have my back. And so there is a group called Melinda's Backups, and some of them are here today. I see they're, they're like right up front, and they, um, they are the most amazing people. I will not cry. I got it, okay. They are, um, they are the most amazing people because they understand my heart. They understand what's important to me. They understand that singing is great, but I have this platform and there's something that, that we can do with it. And so they've gotten behind me every step of the way. They, um, when I was doing the American Idol tour, and instead of sending me flowers for every show, they donated bed nets to Malaria No More. They, they walk in the Music City Marathon every year and raise money for Malaria No More and has also, raise money for a Melinda Doolittle scholarship here at Belmont, which is what we're celebrating today. I mean, come on. <laughs> I, it, it is it's so huge to me that because of the backups and because of great supporters like that, that you know, someone, someone else gets to experience Belmont and gets the chance to do that because they understand my heart and they understand what's important to me. So I, I wouldn't go back for anything. I wouldn't change going on American Idol, um, being an artist, I wouldn't change any of it. How do you, a question, how do you balance uh, your personal life with friends, family, and your career? Very carefully. Now, um, I, gosh. Sometimes I do it better than others. You know, when, uh, when I'm home, occasionally I'm exhausted mm -hmm. and don't want to hang out that much, but I realize that my friends and my family, they, they kind of rejuvenate me and get me ready for the next thing. Uh, another way is that I take my three best friends on the road with me. They sing background with me, so we travel together and that makes it easier for me to have them with me to, to have them around we have we try to find time for girls nights you know um don't really date that much but outside of that <laughs> the, um i <laughs> you know i i do make time for my friends and they make yeah. time for me we're all busy i mean being an artist is a busy job but we all have really really busy jobs so we're all just working to make time for each other so that we can keep that balance. This is a very good question. The question is, um, as you said before, American Idol was not your goal. What were your aspirations before you did Idol? What, what, did, what was your dream? I, I wanted to be a first call background singer, as I call it. The, the, the first person that people wanted to call when they needed backgrounds on their project, when they needed live background vocals. I wanted to be that person. And I had um, been singing background in Nashville for about eight years, uh -huh. and it got to the point where I didn't even have a day off. I'd be on the road singing for one artist, I'd come home, go straight to the studio. I was, I was working a ton, so I thought maybe the next step is to, you know, expand to maybe the LA area or something like that. I just wanted to be the best background vocalist there was. I loved it so much and that was my goal. I, I thought it was a cool goal. <laughs> it is a cool goal. I, love, I, I mean, I loved it. I love being a part of other people's dreams yeah. too. So that, that for me was awesome and um, I definitely would have been happy singing background and making a living of that and getting those new opportunities and in and, and all the different cities, all, all the different artists, I, I loved it. Yeah. When you, you talk about how busy you were, when you do have downtime, what do you like to do? What are your interests? I love television. I love um, air hockey. <laughs> you laugh, but I am the queen. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I know that the, the Nashville flood was definitely devastating for our whole area. Yeah. Um, 
one of the most devastating parts for me was that um, Dave and Buster's at Opry Mills <laughs> <laughs> was a way and there was no air hockey. Um, but uh, so I've, I've already been back since it's opened back up. Um, but I, it is, it's my favorite thing to do. I, I love it and I, I'm very competitive and I love beating other people <laughs> at air hockey. I have beaten most of the backups. Uh, <laughs> when they come to town, I play them. Um, there was a little eight-year-old boy at Dave & Buster's one time that came up to me and asked, could he take a picture and get an autograph? And I was like, if you play me in a game of air hockey, I will do it. And he was like, okay. And I beat him so badly. And he, <laughs> he was... He was so upset, like almost tearing up, and I was like, I, I forgot, you know, that you're, you're eight, and I should, um, but that was another lesson that my mother taught me, to learn how to lose gracefully, you know? And so I was actually teaching him a little lesson there. And, uh, so I was, uh, but, uh, so I was like, I will do, part, right? Right. I was like, I will do anything you want. I'll take a picture. I'll go to your house. Like, what do I need to do to make this better? But um, that, that's kind of my favorite pastime. Yeah. You talk about being a backup singer. How did that happen for you? Because a lot of people may want to do backup singing and do sessions. How did that happen for you? You know what? Um, it started, first of all, here on campus, singing background, just on people's demos over in the Curve Music Business Center. I mean, I, I, I sang for people here. I, I sang background for the Commercial Music Showcase. And um, one of my rehearsals, um, a lady walked in, um, Roz Thompson. I don't, I don't know if she's here today, but her, um, her husband, Chester Thompson, teaches here at school. And her son, Akil, I was in school with him. And she came to watch our rehearsal. Akil was playing drums and I was one of the background singers. Uh -huh. And she came up to me and just, she said, do you sing, you know, background, like studio work? Do you do session work? And I was like, sure. Um, uh -huh. I've done session work here in the studios. And she's like, well, I'd like to hire you to sing um, background on a session. I mean, it just came out of nowhere, seriously. And I'm saying that because I went to this session, I, I got there on time, I was ready to work, and I gave it my all, and because of that one session, I started getting called for more and more sessions, and it just started kind of compounding on everything, and you never know when the door is going to open for you, you know, when there's going to be an open door, but the, the catch is whether or not you're prepared to walk through the door when it is open, you know, whether or not you are a person that has put in the time, gone to your pop rock styles class, learned how to, to really perfect your craft. Yeah. And so that when you walk in there, it's not your only gig. They want to call you back for more. Right. You know, there are really, really important things like showing up on time, being ready to work, warming up your voice, you know, all of that kind of stuff that has helped me continue to work. And that's the key. Getting a session here in town is not the hardest thing. It's continuing to get Getting sessions. This is one. a very word of mouth city. So. How, do you, how do you take care of your voice? <sighs> do you have a routine? I mean... I do. Um, Janet Kenyon, who I talked about earlier that taught my pop rock styles class, has um, a, a DVD out called Provox. And I use that. Um, it's got warm-ups on it and I use that to warm up. I use that to practice um, just because it's so important before you go on stage and before you go into the studio to make sure that you're warm and, and you rest is really important but that doesn't always happen for me. So the next best thing is making sure that I stay warmed up. Yeah. And so um, Janet's program has been the most helpful thing for me on the yeah. road. You've, you've done Christmas at Belmont with our full orchestra and chorus, and in a couple of months, you're getting ready to do another performance with the Boston Pops for their gospel night. Mm -hmm. What's it like for you to step out in front of a big orchestra like this, especially like the Boston Pops Orchestra, world renowned? Uh, it feels like you're flying. 
for the most part. I mean, I love singing with the symphony orchestra because those strings, they just make you feel like you're floating in air. I mean, I, I sing differently and I've, I've watched some videos of me singing with like the Boston Pops and I see, I see my arms start to just start to, you know, just kind of fly and I'm like, okay, stop flapping. <laughs> but um, I, it's just something that just is uplifting and just so amazing and you hear music the way it was meant to happen, you know, those live strings and all that, the horns, and um, I did a Christmas tour with the Boston Pops, and it was one of the most amazing things in the world to stand on that stage every night and to have them behind me in a 200-voice choir, you know, singing along, and, yeah. and to do Christmas at Belmont, it's, it's just an honor to sing with any symphony the skirmer horn here to do Cinderella with them and to do so many different events that I've been able to do with them. It's yeah. just, there's nothing like it. What about Broadway? You ever thought about Broadway? I Have thought about it. I've had, I've had the opportunity. Um, I auditioned um, for one show on Broadway because um, I was asked to go in and audition. I didn't necessarily want to be in that particular show, and um, they offered me the part on the spot, which I hear never really happens, but I didn't, it, I didn't want to do that show, and I was like, oh no. Um, <laughs> but they were, it, it just, it was the wrong timing and the wrong show for me. And um, so I didn't, I didn't do that particular one, but I, I would love to do a Broadway show at some point. I definitely would. Um, I am the kind of person that doesn't like to stay in one place too long, uh -huh. so maybe I need to do like the Broadway tour, you know, so that I can move around a little bit, but I, I would love to be a part of a Broadway show. You ever thought, of, thought about a role you would like to play in a Broadway show? Huh. I would, I think I might love to be Dolores in Sister Whoa. Act. Um, <laughs> that, but it's a hard role, <laughs> and she's a soprano, and I don't know if you guys can tell by the way I talk, <laughs> but uh, I'm a tenor, so um, <laughs> I, I need, I probably need to be like Big Mama Thornton or something. <laughs> uh, but I, uh, th th I think that would be fun if they would lower the songs. You could do that too, that right, right. would be for you. Uh, what other goals do you have for yourself? Um, my, my main goal right now is to make sure that my career as a whole is a marathon and not a sprint. I want to make sure that I'm doing things that, that foster longevity. You know, I don't want to just do the cool thing at the moment that's going to last for a year, maybe. Uh -huh. You know, I want to make sure that, that what I'm doing is fostering longevity and building my career so that I have a bigger and bigger platform to do things that make a difference, like Malaria No More, or uh, the scholarship here, or the Ronald McDonald House that I've been a part right. of, you know. Children's Hospital, you've the, done that. The Children's Hospital, just, just making sure that, that I am building a career that lasts for a long time, but also the platform is one that I can make a difference from. Final words, advice for this group? My motto in life is to dream big, pray hard, and be prepared. And I challenge everybody in this room to do that. Make sure that you are not scared to dream outside of the box. Let your dreams go further than you could ever, ever, ever imagine. Pray hard, let God take control of those dreams and take them, take you on a ride that will change your life forever. And make sure that you're prepared to walk through every open door that you have. That's great advice. Great advice. This has been a production of the Mike Curb College of Entertainment and Music Business at Belmont University and Nashville Public Television.